Hey, it's Dave Wyman from Wyman and Bob. Time for a little football 101 and Seahawks get a good win at home. It looked kind of shaky in the first half. They end up winning 37 to 27, two weeks in a row that they scored uh, 37 points. So um, let's see if maybe they can do it next week and that would be maybe an NFL record. I think the 49ers scored 30 points, three consecutive games. So, uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a good win. Here's the thing to like about this win. Number one is that it was really rough going in the first half and in the second half, running the same stuff on offense and even a little bit more complicated stuff, they did it with at one point 80 percent backups on the offensive line four out of five guys on the offensive line were backup players and i don't like to call them backups i mean it's just they're not the starters but they're good football players jake curran stone Forsyth. so saw anthony bradford the rookie play um, at guard so yeah at one point damian lewis was out and so there was four backup guys in there and they got it done and so that's very encouraging about just you know how they're running their offense and and how you know they were running some pretty complicated um, you know uh, formations and things like that motion stuff and they handled that part really well so yeah I thought that was uh, that was something to to really like they also had a lot of guys missing on defense like Reek Wool and Kobe Bryant so good win um, the other thing about the offensive line is that. You know, they were up against a front seven that's one of the better front sevens, just personnel-wise, in the NFL. But they cleaned it up in the second half. They didn't give up any sacks in the second half. Gino didn't turn the ball over. He only has one interception on the year. So Gino has looked really good. And, um, you know, the tight end package with, uh, with Kobe Parkinson. Uh, and you look at Will Disley and Noah Fant. Those guys have 23 targets, 19 catches. So very reliable there. You got the best duo as far as receivers go with uh, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and we haven't even really cracked open JSN yet Jackson Smith and Jigba hasn't really gotten loose and had that kind of game that he's has the potential to have but we're going to talk about the running backs the two young running backs Ken Walker and in this case Zach Charbonnet we're going to talk about him running people over now one of these plays that I'm going to show you didn't count but I'll tell you this it still happened and that film goes around the NFL, even if there's a penalty, they're looking at plays like this and a lot of DBs and linebackers are looking at that film and going, this rookie kid from UCLA, Zach Charbonnet, he's gonna, he could run you over. <laughs> he's a tough kid. Plus he's got great moves and great shakes. Same thing with Ken Walker. So uh, yeah, I think it, it, was, it was interesting to see that he was putting his shoulder down at the end of the plays. And let's take a look at uh, the first one. This is the one that didn't count. But like I said, it still gets on film. It gets out there to the NFL. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of um, opposing linebackers and DBs are going to think twice about coming up and, and trying to take this guy on. Here we are in the, the formation here. And there's Zach back here. And he does a good job of just reading the gaps and things like that. And, and again, you know, these are a bunch of guys that you haven't really worked with that much, you know. So uh, not to mention the fact that he is a rookie. Here we see uh, just a, a handoff, looks like it's going to his, uh, to his left and, you know, good blocking right here. It looks like they've got a man on a man. And then also, you know, JSN is coming up here looking for some work. Same thing with DK Metcalf. You saw Tyler Lockett get a really good block um, on, in the run game um, later on when uh, Walker had a touchdown. So everybody's contributing. Everybody seems to know what they're doing. And uh, this is, uh, this is a really a testament to just good coaching. Here we see kind of just a little pile here, but look at this seal block right here by Kobe Parkinson. I mean, that is just fantastic for, for a tight end and a guy who really was kind of like a, a big receiver in college. He wasn't up on the line and he's really transformed his body into you know being a, a blocker. And this is Brian Burns right here that he's blocking really good football player. So he seals the edge right there. You got these guys down here and so Zach, decides to cut it back. And here he is in the open field and you know you, you see that uh, the, the pile, a lot of people <laughs> were, were flowing this way, a lot of their players, and then he comes here and then he's in a situation where he could put a move here or he could lower his shoulder. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, that it's gonna cause some, uh, some question marks around the league of like, well, okay, what's this young rookie gonna do? Because this guy is a big dude. He really is, he's, you know, you see him in his uniform, 
He looks like he's about 6'3", 225, 30 pounds. He's not quite that big, but he looks like it. And here you see him just lowering his shoulder right now uh, um, at this point. And you can see his pad level is underneath the defensive back. Not a good thing for him. And this is just a, a shot from the sideline. Same play, same timing. And, you know, he's just, he really didn't have anywhere to go. So he just decides, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punish this guy. And this is what Pete Carroll talks about all the time. A punishing running back and a punishing running game. And, you know, it's more than just being able to eat the clock up and, you know, have a good run game. It's also that you wanna make, make people pay for it when they tackle you. And this is just a shot of the uh, devastation that occurred <laughs> because he put, his, uh, he put his shoulder down. Now, as I said, that play that we just went through, that did not count because there was a penalty and it got called back. But again, those stay on film. They, it gets sent out around the league. It's on the all 22, obviously, because we're looking at it and everybody's gonna be thinking twice. Here's a, here's a sideline shot of a play where he ends up you know, being, uh, you know, getting down towards the, the two, three yard line. But, you know, this is, uh, again, this is a, they have fairly complex formations, you know, not on this one, but they did have a couple where there was tight ends lined up in the backfield. Um, you know, they, they had these, the tight look by the receivers uh, inside, that's Noah Fant, all kinds of different uh, personnel packages and different formations, and they executed really well in the second half. So let's just take a, a quick look and this is uh, after you know he's already cut it outside and you know he he really you know jake kern tried to get a block here and couldn't get it so charbonnet just hit the gas and decided to you know go outside of the block instead of cutting it back and you know he puts the shoulder down right there and you know you can see that again pad level down and like i said he's a big kid he's fairly tall and He's able to get his pads under this guy. And this is uh, every defender's worst nightmare. I remember getting run over at Philadelphia in 1991. And I remember laying on my back thinking, oh my God, that's gonna go around the league. Everybody's gonna see this. So it's, uh, it's somewhat humiliating and it's kind of a point of pride on for defenders. But when you have a running back like that, the first thing you think is, I'm not gonna get run over by this kid, especially a rookie. And, uh, and he, <laughs> I'm sure he regrets this play and regrets, you know, not getting a little bit lower, but Zach Charbonnet with a great uh, pad level right there, his hips into it. And again, we'll look at the, uh, the devastation that it causes. So here is, <laughs> I like this picture right here because you can see the defensive back there. His arms are up in the air and he went flying, you know, out of bounds and, you know, and, and the whole stadium reacted to that. And, Look, you know, we talk about all of these uh, penalties for big hits and stuff. That's what the NFL is all about. You know, and I, it, it irritates me when they throw flags, even when our guys get hit and there's a penalty. It's a physical game. And, you know, if you start there and you have the most physical team, you're going to win. And this is, like I said, their front seven. So the, the linebackers and the, and the D-line, one of the best in the NFL and one of the toughest hitters like Frankie Louvu, the kid from Washington State, um, just, you know, they're, they're sort of pride themselves on that. And I thought the Seahawks offense out hit him. So just a great, uh, great play there by Charbonnet. He doesn't have a ton of yards, not a ton of carries, but I think he's going to get going. And so if you have him and Walker, that tight end package I talked about with Parkinson and Disley and Fant, and then you got the receivers, not to mention a really, really good quarterback and Gino. Gino was so poised the other day. It was a rough first half. He hung in there and they finally found their way to touchdowns instead of field goals in the second half.